We are now in module 18. We are still working on solving quadratic equations and today we're going to learn a third method that we're going to need. If you remember previously, an equation has what symbol? An equal symbol. To be quadratic, it has an x squared, which means how many solutions? Two solutions. We have already learned to solve a quadratic you can factor, but if factoring doesn't work, then we have to resort to the square root method. Well, we're going to see today that sometimes neither one of those methods work, so we need an alternative, a third method. And our third method today is called completing the square. Before we can ever learn how to solve a quadratic equation, we have to learn what completing the square means. So let's look at our class notes. Up here I have the definition. Completing the square means to transform a binomial into a perfect square trinomial by adding a constant. Let's take that apart. So when I say complete the square, you're going to start with a binomial. What does binomial mean? Good, two terms. So I'm going to give you two terms. And you're going to transform or change it into a perfect square trinomial. What does trinomial mean? Good, three terms. So let's think about that. How can you change two terms into three terms? Well, everybody watch, very simple. If I have two markers and I want to change this into three markers, the only thing I can physically do is add another marker to my collection. So we do complete the square because we're going to start with two, a binomial, and change it to three, a trinomial, we are going to physically add something. And if we go back to our definition, that's what it says. We're going to add a constant. Remember, constant means a number. So what I'm going to do first is show you how to do this. How do you complete the square, make a binomial into a trinomial? So let's go to the whiteboard, and we're going to look at examples 1, 3, 5, and 7 in our notes. OK. Starting with example 1, I have a binomial x squared plus 4x. I want to make it a trinomial. The, what, to do this, we call this complete the square. So we're going to add on a missing number. Now, this just can't be any number you like. The number that goes here is going to do something special. It's going to make your new trinomial factor. And it's not just going to factor, it's going to factor to be identical. Because remember, that's what perfect square means. Something times itself. So let's play the game. Let's first guess at this. Could the number be 1? No. Because can you multiply to 1 and add to 4? You can't. 1 times 1 is 1, and that does not add to 4. So the missing number is not 1. Is it 2? Well, what multiplies to 2? 1 and 2. Will 1 and 2 add to 4? No. That only adds 3. So that doesn't work. Can the missing number be 3? Well, what number multiplies to 3? 1 and 3. Will that add to 4? Yes. But now think about this. If I asked you to factor that trinomial, you would put two parentheses. You'd say x squared is x times x. What multiplies to 3? 1 and 3. And to add to 4, they both be positive. The rule says, the definition says, when you do completing the square, when you change this binomial into a trinomial, it's got a factor to be a perfect square. Is this a perfect square? Is this something times itself? No. So therefore, 3 is not the missing number either. OK, what about 4? What multiplies to 4? 1 and 4, 2 and 2. What, can you multiply to 4 and add to 4? Sure you can. Which combination adds to 4 here? 2 and 2. So think about it. If this is our missing number to make our binomial become a trinomial, and then I said to factor this, it would factor to be exactly alike. And x plus 2 times x plus 2 
we've already learned to write is x plus 2 squared. So the missing number is 4. So when they say complete the square, all they want is the missing number. What number would you add to make that a trinomial? The catch is that number's got to make the trinomial factor to be identical. Now, is there an easy way where you could just look at the binomial and get this number? Sure there is. There is a rule. To complete the square, you take half of this coefficient in front of x. What's half of 4? 2. Then you take that and square it. 2 squared is 4. So let's write that down. The rule to complete the square. The rule to complete the square is you take half of the coefficient that's in front of x and then you square it. That's why it's called completing the square. So now that we got the rule, this will be real simple. I want to complete the square. I want to add on a missing number. I'm going to take half of negative 6. What's half of negative 6? Negative 3. I'm going to then square negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. You have now made a trinomial, and this is guaranteed to factor to be alike. All right, let's go here. I want to complete the square. I want to add on a missing number. The rule is take half. I'm going to take half and negative 3. Ugh. If I take half and negative 3, I'm not going to get a whole number. I'm going to get a decimal. Now, we don't want decimals when we complete the square because they're harder to work with. Believe it or not, we want a fraction. So think about it. When you say you're taking half of 3, you're saying you're taking that negative 3 and dividing it by 2. Just like up here. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. This show happens doesn't divide by 2. But if we leave it as an improper fraction, now we can square it in our head. Because we've been singing, multiplying fractions is no problem. Top times top, bottom times bottom. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 2 times 2 is 4. So when you complete the square, you either want to add a whole number or a fraction. No decimals. Whole numbers, fractions. The answer will be whole numbers if these divide. If they can, does not divide nicely, the answer is going to be a fraction. So let's try 7. I want to do complete the square. I want to add on the missing number that makes this a trinomial. So the rule is we take half. What are we taking half of? Negative 5. Well, I can't divide negative 5 and half E evenly to get a whole number. So I leave it a fraction. Taking half means to divide by 2. Then I'm going to square that. That's easy to square. Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. 2 times 2 is 4. Now you have your missing number. This is now a trinomial. And now it will factor. Now that we understand what complete the square means and how to do a complete the square, now we're going to use this to solve a quadratic equation. So let's go to our notes. If you look at your notes, I will be honest, I'm not a fan of this because to use completing the square to solve a quadratic, your notes say there are six steps. You have to remember these six steps. So, Step one, make sure your x squared has a coefficient of 1. So you just look and see. Step two, move the constant to the right. Step three, do what I just taught you. Complete the square. Make that binomial into a trinomial. Once you do that, the other three steps make sense. You make it a trinomial, so step four, it will factor. Because it factors to be exactly alike, it's going to be written as a square. So step five means if you have a square, you do the opposite. You square root. And then you're going to solve it. Now, I agree with you. That's a lot to remember. It's not a hard process, 
It's just a lot to remember. So we're going to look at example two in the notes, and that's the one we're going to do by completing the square so we can make sure everybody gets the process. So let's go to the whiteboard. Okay. All right, here's our equation we want to solve today. 2x squared minus 20x minus 2 equals 0. All right. I want to relate this to what we've already done. Remember, this is an equation. It has an equal sign. It is quadratic. It has an x squared. I've taught you there are many methods to solve these. The first method would be to factor. Well, this looks good. It's already set equal to 0. So the question is, how would you factor this? Well, there's a GCF. They can all be divided by 2, right? So you'd pull out the 2, and you'd be left with x squared minus 10x minus 1 equals 0. Inside, you have a trinomial. Will this factor? Well, you could try it. You could put your two parentheses. We know x squared is x times x. What multiplies to 1? Well, that's 1 times 1. Here's the catch. Will 1 and 1 subtract to 10? No. So what happens is we can't finish the factoring. And if we can't finish the factoring, and we can't get that down to being just an x, we can't do the factoring way of doing it. All right, so factoring's out. So then we've learned the square root method. The square root method said move everything over that we can, and then square root both sides. So we can move the 2 over. So you'd have 2x squared minus 20x equals 0. But wait a minute, you're not done moving. If you want a square root, the only thing that could be on the left side is the term with the square. So we would still have to move the 20x by adding it. It can be moved. And we would still move the 2 by dividing. And you're right, we could square root it. But here's our next problem. We know squares and square roots cancel out and leave us with x. But can you square root 10x and get a number as an answer? No. So if you look, the square root method will not work when you have an x. It will work with the x squared and the constant, but not with the x. So that's out. Because remember, your goal is to solve the equation to get two answers that are numbers. This is not a number because it's got a variable in it. So that doesn't work. So that is why we have this third method, completing the square. It's got six steps. Step one says make sure your x squared term has a coefficient of one. There's my x squared. What's the coefficient? Two. That's not going to work. How are we going to make that a one? Well, we'll do the opposite of multiply, which is divide. But we've already discussed this. If you divide one term of an equation by 2, you divide everybody by 2. It's got a balance. This will cancel. x squared minus 10x minus 1 equals 0. So that was step 1. Step 2, move the constant. Who's the constant? The 1. So we'll move it by adding. So there's step 2. So now we have x squared minus 10x, this cancels, equals 1. The reason why we move the 1 is to do completing the square, you must have two terms of binomial. Now we got it. Now we're going to make this a trinomial. We just learned how to do that. We're going to add on a missing number. That's what completing the square is. To do this, the rule is to complete the square, you take half a negative 10. Half a negative 10 would be negative 5 and then you square it. Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. So that's what step 3 is, complete the square. But wait a minute, you better pay close attention. Here's an equal sign. An equation is a balance, a seesaw. And we've already discussed, if you do something to the left, you got to do it to the right. We add it 1, we add it 1. We add it 25, we got to add 25 here. So when you do complete the square, when you add the number on the left, you have to add it on the right to keep balance. Now, step four makes sense. 
Why do we make this a trinomial? Because it, now it's guaranteed to factor. So step four is to factor it. You'd put two parentheses. X squared is X times X. What multiplies to 25 and adds to 10? Well, 1 and 25 multiplied by 25. But will that add to 10? No. 5 and 5 multiply to 25. Will that add to 10? Yes. And to add, the symbols have to be the same. To add to a negative, they're both negative. Now, the great thing about this is we all know x minus 5 times x minus 5 can be written as x minus 5 squared. And it equals 1 plus 25 which is 26. So the whole purpose of doing completing the square is to make yourself have a trinomial that will guarantee to factor, to be exactly alike. Now we're back, and this makes sense. This is squared. We can't move the 5 because it's stuck in parentheses. So to get rid of that square, step 5 is square root both sides. So now we're using the square root method. Squares and square roots are opposites. So they cancel out. That leaves us the x minus 5 equals. Remember, when you do the square root method, when you draw that square root symbol on the right, you have to put a plus or minus square root 26. So we have one more step now. First of all, you're right. There's a square root. So the question is, can we reduce this? Well, is there a perfect square that divides into 26? Remember, the perfect squares are 4, 9, 16, 25. Does 4 divide into that, that evenly? No. Does 9? No. 16? No. 25? No. So that root is in lowest terms. But we're not done because we want x by itself. So the last thing to do, step 6, is to isolate your variable. Add 5, add 5. A minus 5 and a plus 5 are opposites. They cancel out. So you will have, I'll go over here, x equals. Here's the problem. That 5 is a whole number. That's a whole number 5. That 26 is in a square root symbol. So it's not a whole number. We've been talking about this for now 18 modules. You can only add things that are alike. You cannot add a whole number to a root. So when we were back in Radical World, chapter 15, we said, where do you write the whole number? Does it go in the back or the front? It goes in the front. So we have a positive 5 that's going to go in the front, and that's both plus or minus square root of 26. Because the 5's in the front, we don't need the positive sign. This means there's two answers. x equals 5 plus square root of 26 and x equals 5 minus square root of 26. That plus or minus in between the 26 and the 5 says there's one answer positive, one answer is negative. Now I agree with you. That probably doesn't make any sense to you. Those answers are in radical form. If you want to know actually what they are, you need to get out your calculators and get out the decimals. So if you had your calculator, you would type 5 plus square root 26 equals. And I guarantee you it's going to spit out a decimal bigger than 10. 10 point something. Again, if you want to know what this is as a decimal, you would type 5 minus square root 26 equals. And I guarantee you're going to get a decimal that's on the, a negative that's between 0 and 1. And then if the direction said to give it as a decimal, they would ask you to round. But I'm sure the answer doesn't want to be rounded right now because we were just solving an equation and we want the exact solution. And just like we talked about, quadratics always have two answers. Those are two different answers. Impress me. What do you call a binomial and a binomial where you change the middle symbol? Yes, you could call these answers conjugates. Catch you at the next video.